Hello and welcome back and I'd like to talk to you now about the history of hypnosis. And I find this absolutely fascinating and I hope you do too. The ancient Egyptians and Greeks used a form of hypnosis in their sleep temples for healing purposes. Later the Druids called it magic sleep. And although the term hypnosis wasn't invented until the 19th century, many kinds of religious and primitive trance have been around for as long as man. Magic, voodooism, healing faiths, and yoga, to name but a few. The father of hypnosis as we sort of know it was a gentleman called Frederick Anton Mesmer, from which the word mesmerize has been coined. And hypnosis as we now know it and understand it all began with Mesmer. Mesmer believed that we had as human beings a, a magnetic fluid and an animal magnetism about us. And he began experimenting with magnets where he would have people stand in there and run magnets over them to help to cure them of physical conditions. And this apparently worked and many times he had up to 3,000 people a day calling on him to actually perform his mesmerism techniques on them to heal. And he used to treat the rich and the poor alike. There is a story at one time that he actually magnetized a tree and the poor people tied ribbons and strings to it to attach themselves to this magic, magic tree and therefore become cured of their ailments. Mesmerism became such a phenomenon that in 1784, yes, 1784, Louis the 16th actually set up a commission to investigate this phenomena, which was actually headed by Benjamin Franklin. And the commission's findings headed by Franklin found that animal magnetism or magnetism fluids within the human body didn't exist. And mesmerism fell out of favour in France until it raised again in the mid 19th century. In the mid 19th century, James Braid, a Scottish doctor, published a book entitled The Neuropenology or The Study of Nervous Sleep. And he invented the word neurohypnosis, hypnos being the Greek word for sleep. And he was the first person to attribute the phenomena to psychological rather than physical variables. And this renewed interest in France. It renewed interest in France as a method of pain reduction in surgery. In 1845, a Scottish doctor, James Easdale, who was a British army surgeon, discovered and put to extensive good use the power of hypnosis and used the techniques which has previously been pioneered by Mesmer. And he had phenomenal success in surgery with the, uh, the soldiers who were injured in India. In those days the mortality rate was roughly around 50%. But when he used these techniques he actually reduced that to 8% and found that his patients recovered more quickly than the average cases of his day. And since that time, there has been a revival of interest in the use of hypnosis, and more scientific studies have been carried out extensively. Sigmund Freud, who lived from 1856 to 1939, and is generally regarded as the modern founder of psychiatry, did use hypnosis and worked with a Viennese physician called Dr. Joseph Brewer. Brewer had discovered that patients could recall events in hypnosis that they could not otherwise recall. Freud 
himself later abandoned hypnosis because he could not overcome his patient's resistance to traumatic memories. He subsequently went on to develop the technique called free association as a means of accessing the unconscious mind. Free association itself is used by therapists and hypnotherapists now quite extensively within their work. And that really brings us up to date because we now come to Milton Erickson, who's considered to be the founder of modern hypnotherapy. Erickson lived from 1901 to 1980, and in his teenage years was stricken with polio. He was told he'd never ever walk again. However, he lay in his bed and watched the way the doctors and nurses moved their limbs and he retrained and reprogrammed his unconscious mind to get his limbs to move again and become cured. Erickson went on to be a, a medical doctor and was phenomenally successful in his work. Erickson could send people into trance without even mentioning the words hypnosis or trance. He was the master of modern hypnotherapy. And his techniques are used now and today by most hypnotherapists. Ericksonian techniques are successful in achieving results quickly and easily. And therefore, they're used quite extensively, along with others, of course. That really brings us to the end of the history of hypnosis. And I hope you've enjoyed that brief time we've spent running through hypnosis and where it comes from and how it helps and affects and cures people from the everyday afflictions which trouble them in their lives. Once again, thank you for visiting the site. And please move on, and if you need to contact me, send me an email or telephone me, and that's fine. Thank you. Bye-bye.